today. We want to talk more about Lyft's earnings. Again, the stock here moving a bit higher after hours, up just around 1%. We want to bring in our co-worker here, colleague Brian Sazi. And Brian, I understand you were able to speak with Lyft's co-founder, John Zimmer, about these results. What did you have to say? Yeah, I caught up uh, with John Zimmer earlier on, uh, Shauna and Adam. Uh, he, st he told me that he still views Lyft uh, as one of the ultimate recovery stocks, ultimate COVID-19 recovery stocks. In fact, mm -hmm. he said, quote, we are like a coiled spring. Uh, and I think what you're seeing in this quarter and why the stock initially went down, I, I really want to point to two things. One, they did miss on active riders, they, perhaps a little, a little bit more than some people were looking for. And then on the press release, too, you had Brian Roberts, who three months ago on the earnings release noted that uh, he expected adjusted operating profits by the fourth quarter uh, of this year. On the earnings release now, he did not reiterate that message. He did call out a, a second half recovery, but he didn't mention that profitability measure. Uh, so I think all eyes now turn to this conference call to see if he, he brings that measure back up. But again, uh, at least as far as John Zimmer concerned, he's staying upbeat. He still sees a recovery later this year as more people get vaccinated. All right, Brian Sazi, thanks so much. For more on this, we want to bring in Dan Ides of Webbush Securities. And Dan, we went over all these results. You just ha heard what Brian Sazi had to say, that miss on active risers, riders, the fact that we didn't hear adjusted operating profits mentioned in this earnings release. What, what are your initial thoughts on the numbers that we just got? Yeah, step in the right direction. This continues to be core recovery play for other side of the Dark Valley, especially with the vaccine being deployed in a more profitable model. And, and I think this is really what investors, you know, are, are really going to look past this quarter, go into the rest of the year. And if I look at just the profitability profile combined with what we're seeing on a rebound and ride share, and this continues to be a one-two punch in terms of recovery names along with Uber. And that's what the street's going to continue to focus on, ultimately a bullish sign. Dan, in fact, the, the street right now, I mean, the shares in the aftermarket are trading just a little bit higher. They're up about, uh, I believe, uh, almost 2%. Let me ask you this, though, um, because they were such a darling before the pandemic. This this metric that they threw at us, that they eliminated $360 million in fixed costs on an annualized basis, um, and that's over the original 2020 plan. I know we all look at the ridership and the revenue number. That's a pretty big uh, number that they just threw there that a lot of investors might miss. Well, that's the huge part right now is that they're going to be entering the recovery with a much more profitable model as they cut out so many of these fixed costs as well as prop 22 in the rear view mirror that's sort of the combination why right now lyft and uber these stocks continue to move higher in my opinion on the ride train more and more looking for recovery plays and their back was against the wall and they've done everything step by step but also communicated it to the street i think lyft and uber have done great jobs there and that's why i continue to view this it's a feather in the cap for the bulls Dan, you know, it's funny you mentioned uh, the cost component because they did know in the earnings release that they have cut more than about $300 million in annualized fixed costs in the fourth quarter. That's 20% ahead of their budget. You know, Zimmer did tell me they have more room to cut. My question is, where are they cutting these costs? And do these costs come back into the business uh, as more people ride and things get back to normal? Yeah, Brian, I also think there's a lot of leverage in the model. And, you know, I think in terms of the cost cutting, a lot of it is really... You know, they had some other initiatives around autonomous and other areas that they've cut. And I think if you look at it, they've had to rationalize the cost structure. And that's the key. And that's why, you know, many, as you know, others have talked about, okay, why these stocks doubled from, from the bottom. And I think it continues to be. They've cut costs. They've navigated. Of course, Uber has food delivery. That continues to be a, a huge growth area. But when you look at Lyft and Uber, these are recovery names, and that's the key. Well, Dan, speaking of Uber, after we just got these results from Lyft, what do you think we can expect from Uber after the bell tomorrow? It's going to be the same story. And then Dara, you got to give him and the team all the credit. They've doubled down on food delivery. And you look with everything we're seeing with Postmates, Drizzly, and others, I think that's worth $15, $20 per share to the stock. And food delivery was the anchor on the ship. Now it's a major asset. They've doubled down cut costs, focused on profitability. It's been a huge you know, I think uh, achievement for Dara and the team, everything they did with their back against the wall coming out of the IPO, the haters were out there, pandemic hits, and now look what's happened. I think they're on the other side of this. All right, Dan Ives of Webbush, always great to speak with you. Thank Thanks you. so much for jumping on with us here today. And of course, our thanks to Brian Sazi as well.